Coming up next on MTS Now, a new Gates Millennium Scholar, a mermaid unveiling, and student police academy graduations, plus spring sports action and our third segment featuring our new data walls. Stay tuned for this and much more coming up next on MPS Now. NPS Now, your source of news and information about Norfolk Public Schools. I'm your host, Karen Tanner. 16 fourth grade students at Norview Elementary recently graduated from the Norfolk Police Youth Academy. Following the ceremony, students saw firsthand how dogs in the K-9 unit and robots in the bomb squad help keep the citizens of Norfolk safe. Uh, Youth Academy is a four to five week program, anything from um, blocks of instruction from various departments of the police department from bullying, um, gang squad, animal control, um, bomb squad, canine unit, um, about a, 45 minutes to an hour each week and then the fifth week is their graduation. It was 16 fourth graders that uh, earned their way and had a fantastic time. Granby High School started an after-school program entitled Girls in Engineering, which meets Mondays and Wednesdays to teach girls about all the different aspects of engineering. It led to the MATE ROV competition at ODU, where the girls competed for the first time. Debbie Horniak has the story. Engineering has long been a male-dominated world. The Girls in Engineering group at Granby High School are looking to change that. What started as an after-school activity took the girls to the MATE ROV competition where they placed six out of 14 teams and were the only team made up entirely of girls. There's such a great gender divide in the, in the classes, and it's not just engineering, it's architectural, it's electronics, and so we are trying to put more girls in those areas and in those classes and introduce them to the different areas of technology education. Meet Pippi. Named for being an adventurer, the girls designed and built everything themselves. The funds for this project, however, came from the generosity of their mentors, Ms. Deborah Marshall and Mr. Roger Lajess. That first time uh, in March when they put it into the, water, the pool at the community center, their eyes just opened up. I mean, they just, it was just like Christmas morning to them. It was just unbelievable. It had some problems. They had to come back to the classroom, re-engineer some things. Then we brought it in uh, two weeks ago. We brought it for our final test, and everything worked fine. It starts at school activity, but I can see it going further. Like, we all plan to take an engineering course next year, and I'm pretty sure that will go further. We'll go to competition. It'll start adding more females, and it'll just grow from there. And even though we all had equal parts, I still do feel like that um, the discipline that we want to take when we get to college, the different disciplines in engineering did help us because it made us realize what things we like and what things we didn't like, and if um, the engineering field that we want to enter into is actually what we want to do. It also helped us realize our abilities and what we could do. Like, the first day we came, I'm pretty, we didn't <laughs> all think we could do something like this. So, I mean, the results of this is amazing. The Campostella Elementary Sea Perch Underwater Robotics team won the regional competition and now they're on their way to the national championship in Indiana next week. Good luck, Campostella team members. Okay. With the help of parents and environmental committee, Taylor Elementary was able to create a butterfly garden for their students and others to enjoy. They also proved that starting out small can make a big difference. Creating an environment conducive for learning is good. Creating an enticing and stimulating learning area is even better. That's exactly what the parents at Taylor Elementary are working on. Collaborating with the teachers to see what was needed to help out in the classroom, this beautiful butterfly garden evolved. Last year, we started talking about having an outdoor space that the kids could use to bring learning outside. And some of us talked about, okay, well, 
we need to start simple, something that we can maintain. And so we got donations through local community partners, businesses, and people digging plants out of their yard, bringing them by. And this is what we ended up with. And this is just phase one. This is our butterfly garden. We are also getting some raised beds and composting. We've had the tables built by our environmental committee and we're planning on bringing learning outside. We've got a science closet with microscopes and magnifying glasses and science supplies that the teachers request and that's what we want is we want them to bring all of that out here to use this space. What I wanted to do was something cross-curricular so that they're not only doing science but they're reading, they're writing, they're doing social studies uh, and science all at each table it's something different. I love it and I think everybody else here does too because it is so beautiful and it attracts so many butterflies. I don't know how but I don't know how they love these flowers so much but they just do. During this event Taylor also unveiled a new mermaid for students and the community to enjoy. Congratulations to Shandell Scott, a Norview High School senior, for winning the 2013 Gates Millennium Scholarship. She is the only recipient from Norfolk and one of 12 in the entire state of Virginia. Congratulations are also extended to Alyssa Hottendorf and Dylan Verratt of Morey High School, who were awarded $2,500 from the National Merit Scholarship. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships based on students' abilities, skills, and academic accomplishments. Richard Bolin Elementary students enjoyed lots of fun playing and learning during ODU Day. Cheerleaders and athletes enjoyed interacting with students and encouraged them to attend college. Coming up next, Steve Sutmiller will share more spring sports action on NPS Sports. Welcome back to NPS Now. I'm Steve Setmiller, Senior Coordinator of Athletics. Regular seasons are winding down in spring sports as teams are gearing up for district tournaments. In baseball action, the Norview Pilots traveled to play Mar the Mari Commodores. Bottom of the third with the game tied at one, Mari's Caleb Sebus hits a shot into left field. A run scores and the Commodores were up two to one. Kenny Howard tried to get the Piles back in with the single, but the Piles couldn't muster any more runs as Mari improved to 8-4 in the district with a 3-1 win. In girls soccer, Norview Piles visited the Lady Bookers of Booker T in the season finale. Here, Booker T's at Davis Small stops a goal with a nice save, but Norview applied the pressure and controlled the game. In the end, it was all Pilots as they defeated the Lady Bookers by the score of 8-1. Middle school sports action. As tournament week concluded with champions crown in girls tennis, field hockey, and track championships. In girls tennis, Norview's Kara Smiley over Blair's Caroline Barrera by the score of 8-4 to, to win the girls singles. In doubles, it was all Blair Middle School final. Caroline Barrera and Clara Domini won this by the score of 8-3 over teammates Charlotte Melcher and Kate Hickey. Field hockey finals were played at Powhatan Stadium and the hardware was on the line. Blair and Northside earned spots in the finals by securing victories in the semifinal round. Blair, the regular season champion, started quickly with goals by Madeline Crockett, Samantha Hill, and Alexis Ellis. The final score was 4-0 as Blair secured the tournament championship. The Norfolk Portsmouth Middle School Track Championship was held at Wilson High School. In the boys, it was Craddock outlasting the Northside Stars to secure the boys' championship. While in the girls' meet, the action was tight and competitive. Blair came in as defending champions, and at the end, they secured the championship again, but will have to share the trophy with the Craddock girls as both teams tied for first place with a score of 74. Let's take a look at the individual winners.
High school sports regular season has ended and Eastern District Tournament play is next. For all the times, sites, and matchups, go to your big team websites. More NPS Now after this. Welcome back to NPS Now. With us today is Dr. LaTanya Simmons, Deputy Superintendent for Operations and Governmental Relations. Welcome to NPS Now today. It's great to be here, Karen. Thank you for joining us. You know, Dr. Simmons, when you walk down the 12th floor hallway, you see some very decorative boards hanging up there. What are those boards? That's our data wall. It gives our schools an opportunity to see themselves compared against multiple indices of measure. It also provides a transparent seam for our community to really understand what we're doing academically, just at a glance. So what is the purpose of the dad walls? You have different categories up there. So just what's the purpose of having those dad walls? The, it captures one moment in time so that we can see incrementally how well our students are doing across multiple measures. And those measures include attendance, de demographic data, uh, suspensions, uh, student performance on Achieve 3000, My Access. The benchmark data is probably the most critical because it is the same data across schools and it allows our students to see how well they're performing academically. So for the like grades, that. yeah, well for the grades it shows what? First, second quarter? First, second quarter benchmarks at this time and we'll be adding third, the third benchmark is being produced as we speak. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking at the walls, I saw that we're comparing ourselves to other localities in the state. What's the purpose of doing that? It just shows us how we stand as it relates to other school districts that are very much like our district. And I thought it was pretty neat to see how on the wall, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a plethora of things that I think particularly, let me name, name some of them. We have the grades, the benchmark assessments, student teacher attendance, demographics, suspensions. We're even showing the suspensions with the students. Yes, if Karen, if we don't have them, we can't teach them. And so our, our purpose in showing that is to make sure that we are decreasing the number of suspensions that we have throughout the year and that we're truly educating our kids. And I think it's important that even another benchmark up there is overage for grade, that we're being transparent and honest and showing what our overage for grade status is in our schools. Exactly. Yeah. And then also, you know, your Achieve 3000, which I think you had great success with this year. Achieve 3000 is important because it gives a Lexile score for every student. And not only the Lexile score, which is the same thing that would compare with the Virginia Standards of Learning Assessment, it shows the degree of college and career readiness for our schools and our children. It's one thing to learn, but it's another thing to truly learn so that you can demonstrate proficiency based upon what you need to show demonstra demonstrate proficiency in for college and career readiness. And that's something that you've brought new here to Norfolk Public Schools. Achieve 3000 is new to Norfolk Public Schools. I think it was in one school before um, I came. But this district-wide implementation allows teachers and principals to have a lot of fun during off time looking at student performance. It also gives our students a tool to work on their own achievement at home. They get to own and take a great deal, they get to take a great deal of ownership mm -hmm. for what they're doing academically. So the current walls don't show Achieve 3000 or My Access. But they but will the future, next time. Right, exactly. Yes. Um, my Access, tell me about that. My Access is a web-based program that allows every child to log in mm -hmm and write based upon a state rubric, for example. So a child gets a rubric, he writes. Once he presses submit, he gets the score back immediately. He gets a graph showing how well he scored against all categories of writing, and he gets his paper back as an old English teacher might score it. Uh, and he has an opportunity to observe what he's done correctly or incorrectly, read the feedback, and go back in and make corrections or resubmit and get a higher score. So again, a, a student has an opportunity to take full control of their ability in writing. Well, you know, it's a lot of information on those data walls. I think it's important even as a parent or an employee just to see how our schools are doing. So I think it's a great thing that you have the data walls to show our progress. And we will continue to place the progress up there. It allows us to raise the floor, examine the degree to which we're raising the floor mm -hmm. and the ceiling at the same time simultaneously. So how often do you wish to change these data walls? At least four times a year. And then over the summer, we'll probably do a summary and collapse all data and just show uh, the state uh, of education over the past fiscal year. So really, Dr. Simmons, in essence, this is a snapshot of our district's progress. It is simply that, Karen, it's just a snapshot that captures the moment in time, which communicates in a very seamless way 
in a very transparent way the degree to which our children are measuring up based upon multiple indices of measure. And it's simply that. It's not meant to be judged nor evaluated. Mm -hmm. It simply gives our parents an opportunity and our principals an opportunity and our students an opportunity to see themselves as they scored during one moment in time. Well, I hope our principals, our parents, and, and students even have an opportunity to come by at a school board meeting and step outside and walk down the hallway and see how their school is progressing. That is the intent. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing about Dad Walls, and we appreciate you joining us for this edition of MPS Now. The show will air throughout the week on WMPS Channel 47, or you can view it online at www.mpsk12.com. Again, thank you for watching MPS Now.